Hello and welcome. It's Brandon White, your local journalism initiative reporter for NBC Radio News here in LaRange, northern Saskatchewan. We are moments away from a candlelight vigil happening here at the Urban Reserve of the Lac La Ronge Indian Band in solidarity for Tristan DeRocher and Walking With Our Angels, the group that walked here from La Ronge to Regina some 635 kilometers south to the province's capital. Now tomorrow Tristan DeRocher will be in court responding to bylaw violations related to his TP setup on the legislative grounds and his form of protest around the growing epidemic of suicide in the province. Vigils like these have been occurring all throughout Saskatchewan and northern Saskatchewan in support of the cause and in solidarity to change. Good evening. My name is Jackie DeRocher. I'm Tristan's aunt. His mom, Adrian, is my youngest sister. I'd like to start out by thanking everybody for coming out this evening. I know it means a lot to Tristan, but it means that you are willing to make a difference, and that's what Tristan's walking for, for each and every one of us to understand what we can do for mental wellness. And by you showing up today, you are showing that you want to make a difference for mental wellness. That's why you are here. Tomorrow is a big day for Tristan. And it's a big day for our family. He's going to court. I was there in Regina when six officers came. And it was really intimidating as an Aboriginal person to see six people in uniform come charging. And just the way they did it, it was really intimidating. And it was hard to leave Regina. It was hard to leave part of my family there. But as Aboriginal people, I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed. I know in the North, we all pull together. We all support each other. I've always said when we start a government job, we have to take first aid. That's mandatory. Well, there is a new program called Mental Health First Aid First Nations. It's very good. It helps you understand mental wellness and how we can help and support each other. If you want to make a bigger difference, take that course. Wherever you work, tell your employer about that course because the more educated we get, the more we can help each other. <clears throat> Thank you again, Chris, for uh, going down to Regina, that 650 kilometer walk with Tristan. It, when he told me, I was really happy I, I don't know how to explain the feeling, but it was felt good knowing there's people out there because I've been that far down in the hole where I felt like I couldn't do anything about it, where I felt so alone. I think if they witnessed it themselves, they they would understand more. Like Doyle Vermette, he's seen a lot of it. So suicide is just crazy. I. I've witnessed it too much in the 15 years I've lived so far. And, yeah. Thanks. Hi. My name's Sarah Poole. I'm a teacher. I've lost 13 students to suicide since I started teaching. I've done over, probably over 200 interventions and some multiple times with the same person and sometimes it didn't work. When I was younger than Tristan, a little 11 year old girl named Ernestine Eisbester hanged herself. And I did what all good white girls do, I joined a committee. Cause that's what, that's what, <laughs> that's what you do, right? You, you join a committee. You know, you go through all these channels and you, you, I've had, I'm 47. And since I was younger than Tristan, I've been following the rules all this time. And I have taken the training, and I have worked with the kids, and I have done everything that I could. But nobody can do this when every single time, like when I was in the lodge, we lost one kid a month for six months. or what I believe and, and the teachings that I have is that um, those ones that, that leave before their time, they, they stay here and they wander till the Creator calls them home.
And a warrior is somebody that stands up for those that can't speak for themselves when they're hurting. That's what that young man is doing up in Regina. He is a warrior. And for Chris to come here and, and do this and bring all these people together, that shows that he is also a warrior. And if we all come together and support each other and not allow for this to be acceptable, we can make the change. We have a young man, a young brother that, that is up in Regina and he's fasting. And the reason why he is fasting is because of the lack of uh, programming and support that the provincial government is giving us with respect to um, suicide prevention. But suicide prevention comes in many forms. And one of the forms that it comes in is lack of employment. It comes in um, addictions. It comes in family violence. It comes in all kinds of different struggles. I'm sure that when Tristan hears about all you coming here this evening, it will warm his heart and give him the strength to continue to do what he needs to do. So I'm, I'm grateful to be here. I too have lost a, a very close friend of mine to suicide over 10 years ago. And the feeling hurts as much today as it did 10 years ago. We don't forget. So I don't forget about those ones that have gone before their time. And I don't think any of you have either. So Premier Mo, listen to this. Listen closely. Some of our communities are in crisis. Some of them need help. You can't sit on the fence anymore. This has to change. We cannot lose any more people to this. So with that, I pray to the Creator and I ask Him, make them ones understand. Make them cry. Let them feel what we feel. And with that, I acknowledge everybody for coming here, and I'm so grateful to be here and spend this time with you. Thank you. Candlelight vigil that happened uh, here tonight was very powerful. Uh, it showed a lot of support uh, and, and sent in a lot of prayers, strength, and wellness. And hope, and hope I tried. First thing, as I know, today is his uh, 13th day of his uh, hunger strike, uh, so I'm hoping that uh, soon that the provincial government will come together and sign a meaningful legislation uh, in regards to suicide prevention, not only for the <coughs> communities, but for all communities across Saskatchewan, as that's something so needed. And for us to do what we've done, walking over 600 kilometers, the year is 2020. I mean, something like that should have been implemented years ago. It should be fast and on the legislative ground, 13 days today, fasting. We shouldn't even do that. It should be a meaningful legislation. It should be something in place already for our Saskatchewan communities.
Hello, hi, Tansa, everyone. Um, my name is Jesse Sylvester. I'm from Buffalo River Dene Nation, and I'm here to uh, I'm here with the Buffalo River Dene Drummers, and we we're, we're, uh, we walked. Uh, I walked with uh, the walkers, uh, walking with our angels, and um, my brother James and my cousin Philip. Um, we're here also, and we walk with them in support of uh, what they're uh, what they'd like to do for Saskatchewan and for our indigenous peoples. Quid and Iharat in Hedder, Tristan de Rocheru, Arat in Ayat Aran Nisi. It did an Uyan ya, the Saskatchewan gay ya, the Nasa, at that Ahile, as to the Nate in a Sorry. Hi, my name is Amanda Sanderson, CEO and founder of SHB Apparel. So SHB Apparel means spirit of a warrior, hope for the future and the beauty of life. So SHB Apparel is not only an apparel company, we provide resources, support for those who struggle with mental health and suicide and for the families that lost loved ones. So today, I am hosting an event called Suicide Loss for Survivors at Candlelight Vigil. For, just to gather a bunch of people together to support one another and to know that they're not alone. So SHB Apparel is for everyone, for anyone who just wants to support. Um, basically what I want to do is I want to help out, help out as many people as I can through social media, through um, emails, texts, calls, which I do almost on a daily basis, is talking to some, someone from committing suicide. So I strongly believe in having programs for youth and adults. Programs to help them overcome with mental health and sticking to that program. So I facilitate my own workshops to help youth with coping techniques, helping them become allies in their own communities so they can watch out for signs in their youth. Right now, I am working on a program called Healing from Art, which will be held in Saskatoon during the summer. I'm hoping to get this program out there next week. So just look out on social media or you can also email me at amandashbapparel.com. So this program is for any youth from 14 to 19 and the youth um, must have their own cameras. It's going to be a wonderful experience for them. So I heard about the walk through Facebook, about the, the walking with our angels and it just touched my heart to have just these individuals who are walking for suicide awareness, who are walking for this Bill 618 because this is a pandemic right now. It's so important to try to save as many children, youth, moms, dads, aunties, uncles. It affects everybody. So even if you try to save no matter what skin color they are, just try and help, help us come up with a plan, come up with a program that is going to save as many lives. Obviously, you deal on a really regular basis with suicide prevention or intervention, um, but have you personally had this affect you or your family? Yes, so my, both my daughters struggled with mental health and several suicidal attempts, and I have lost loved ones to suicide as well. So, as a mom going through what I went through, 
it was really, really hard, extremely hard, because it breaks my heart every time we, we landed in emergency and lack of sleep because of I wanted to sit by my daughter, making sure that she was breathing, trying to feel her chest, making sure she was breathing. So every time we would leave emergency, we were always left with no resources, absolutely no resources to help me so I can help save my daughters. You heard a lot of luminary things tonight about the gaps in, uh, in what's needed for people that are struggling with mental health, um, anecdotally from these people's lives. But what's something that you don't that you think um, Southerners or people that aren't intimately involved with this issue might not know about um, suicide or suicide prevention in Saskatchewan? What's something that you think people need to learn about this issue? It's to look out for signs. Look out for signs in your loved ones, coworkers, anyone that you you're in contact with on a daily basis, if they're self-isolating themselves, if they just, they're not themselves, always, always look for signs. And if you go on my Facebook page, I share those signs. I share the resources that you can also share with your family and friends. Nice. And just to get a little bit serious, I wanted to, well, a little bit critical, I guess. Do you think that, what the Saskatchewan government has put forward in the last six years of their mental health 10-year plan or since May with Pillars of Hope, are any of these provincial efforts helping? Are they enough? What is your interpretation of what the province has done in regards to this? I don't think they even tackled it a little bit. Only reason being is I... I talk to people every single day and I know what they're going through and I know they get sent home from the emergency with nothing. So that's how people come and turn to me is because I share all those resources and I share all the support systems that are out there. Because as myself, as a mother, I had I did not have those resources at all. So I had to Google everything. And was it easy or could it have been easier when it came to finding the resources that you need when you when you had to Google? What? Oh, it wasn't easy because I had to make calls. I had, after all the Googling, I had to make sure I had to make those calls, make sure that they had anything to help my daughters out. But in reality, they did not have anything. It was me who helped my daughters out. It was me who was there 24 seven and just making sure that they're alive. If you need a sign, this is it. Please don't give up. You, you are loved, adored. You are worthy, you are strong. Do not give up. Yeah.